see you guys in the dark. This happened a long time ago. I'm guessing back in 2006. And I couldn't have been any older than four years old at the time. Yet I vividly remember the fear that I felt during this encounter. It was an early summer morning, and the sun was up, but few people were out. In fact, the streets were practically dead that morning. My mom decided to take my sister, only one years old, seated in a stroller, and I to go throw away garbage at the garbage station. I might add that the garbage station is kind of secluded from nearby houses, bordering one of those deep, dark forests of eastern Sweden. Since I was only four years old when this happened, the memories from the incident have faded a lot. However, my mom remembers all of it. She says that, Upon entering the garbage station, she immediately got an eerie feeling of being watched. I remember that feeling too. I felt creeped out, even though I didn't know why I was scared. I guess I could sense my mom's fear. Walking along that secluded garbage station, my mom suddenly stopped and told me this. Hold onto the stroller as hard as you can, and don't let go, no matter what happens. That's my most vivid dream I have of this, and I don't think I'll ever forget these words. I'll at least never forget how they made me feel. It was as if my blood had turned to ice. I just froze still. My mom sounded stern, but even a toddler can sense when someone's scared shitless. My mom was definitely afraid of something. The rest is just a blur. I don't remember much, apart from the aforementioned, so I'll let the rest of the story be told from the perspective of my mother. This is the recollection of her experience, recalled to the best of my ability. Not far from where we were standing, a truck was parked with a man seated in the front. Nothing unusual. A lot of truck drivers stopped to rest by the side of the road. But this man was staring. He wouldn't stop staring. He stared directly at me, examining my body with the determined gaze of a predator, glowing the three of us in his sight. He truly seemed pleased by the fear he instilled on our faces. In his eyes, they were something else. Almost as if they didn't belong to a human, but rather to a predator on the savanna. I felt like prey, stuck in the claws of a lion. I just couldn't move. That's when he smiled at me. I remember that dead smile, those cold, calculating eyes, and the way that he licked his lips. Almost as if to say, I could kill you if I wanted to. I believe this was the point in time when my mom told me to hold on to the stroller, to hold on tightly and not let go. My mom is a small woman. She's about 160 centimeters, weighing only about 45 kilograms. So that's about 5 foot, 100 pounds. And she could easily have been overpowered by this overweight man in the truck. My mom later admitted she was afraid he'd jump out of the truck and just knock her out, possibly assaulting her, or even kidnapping me or my one-year-old sister. We bolted out of there. We didn't throw away much garbage that morning. We just turned around and walked home as fast as mom can do with a stroller and a four-year-old toddler by her side. We've never talked about what happened that day, up until very recently. The incident has always lingered somewhere in the back of my mind as that weird thing that happened when I was a child. And every time I walk past that garbage station, I get a weird feeling in the pit of my stomach. As previously mentioned, this happened around 2006. Fast forward to about 08. The face of a 10-year-old little girl called Engla had, was printed across the front page of every newspaper in sight. She had been abducted, assaulted, and murdered. And the predator was an overweight truck driver named Anders Eklund who is now known as one of Sweden's most infamous killers. Anders was charged with the murder of Engla, along the rape and murder of a woman named Pernilla. He's all suspected of abducting another little girl, making him a pedophile, a serial rapist, and a serial killer. My mom says that when she saw his picture in the paper, especially when she saw those cold, familiar eyes, she knew that he was the creepy man from the garbage station. That early morning, all those years ago, thinking how my mom or my sister, or possibly me, or all of us, could have been his victims, that sends chills up my spine. Anders, even though I know that you're behind bars, I really don't want to ever see those cold, dead eyes ever again.
Back in 2000, or 2001, I was driving by myself from visiting my mother in Colorado back to Arizona. I was in a station wagon and had a desk my mom had given me that was my grandfather's. I've always been scared driving at night, always thinking that there is someone in my back seat going to get me. This might be because of too many scary movies, or because my mom's paranoia rubbed off on me. I was in the army and drove back and forth a lot to visit her. She would get mad at me for sleeping at rest stops or gas stations and tell me someone was going to kidnap me and kill me. But I just didn't want to be bothered with the hassle and expense of a motel most of the time. I digress. So I'm driving an empty stretch of highway late at night with no other cars around. This red truck comes up behind me flashing his lights and honking his horn at me. I was thinking to myself that there was something wrong with my car. Or maybe there was something wrong with the desk in the hatchback. Because why else would he be so insistent on pulling me over? So I pull over. I get out of my car. As I'm getting out of my car, he's directly behind me, still flashing his lights and honking his horn. I got to about the middle of the car when it hit me. Why is he still honking at me when I'm out of my car? That is odd. Then he gets out of his truck. That's when I knew something just wasn't right. I jumped back into my car and sped off. The next exit was 45 miles or so away. He followed me that entire time. I take the first exit and go to a crowded grocery store with a laundromat next to it. There was an ambulance parked at the laundromat with its lights flashing, and I was next to it. I figured if there was an ambulance, then eventually a police officer should come. The man stayed in his truck in the grocery store parking lot, watching me the entire time. I was terrified. I did not want to get out of the car. I felt like an idiot if I would have to tell someone what happened. I waited about an hour. He finally left. After he left, I waited a little bit longer before continuing my drive back to Arizona. I was paranoid and watchful for any red trucks the entire time. Fast forward about five or six years. I'm watching unsolved cases, or some similar type of crime show with my hubby at the time. And what story pops up? One about a man on that exact stretch of highway, with a red truck, that used those exact tactics to get a few women to pull over and then murder them. I'm really glad that my gut told me something was wrong and to get back into my car and drive away. July 2017. Four teens went missing in New Hope, PA. I worked the overnight shift at a Wawa in the area, and from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., we get all types of people. Normal obnoxious drunks, cops, and the occasional construction worker or gardener in for the morning coffee. So when yet another customer came in covered in dirt, I figured he was just a hard-working man in a blue-collar job. He had been in before, so he made small talk, and he went on his way. That was a Friday. I didn't see him on Saturday, but then Sunday he was in again. He got food and a drink, and after a normal hi, how are you, he went on his way again. Monday comes, and I'm working like normal when a few cops come in for coffee and you can tell something is wrong. We got a lead on those missing teens, they said. We're searching a farm down the road. All of our hearts sank. It had been days since they went missing, so we were slowly losing hope that this confirmed our worst suspicions. The cops were out there all night, stopping in occasionally to update us whether or not they were actually supposed to. They brought in dogs, and eventually found them, 12 feet down and covered in concrete. It was bad. At the scene, they could only identify two of the teens based off of their clothing, but there were enough bones to imply that all four were down there. Everyone was devastated. Then the cops asked for our security tapes. Why, we asked, confused. We hadn't had anyone suspicious. It was then that they realized that the killer, a guy named Cosmo DiNardo, had in fact been in our store Friday night, and again on Sunday. His cousin actually helped him kill but he wasn't in the store. The dirt-covered man was a murderer. I was floored, and when I left work, I looked up a picture of the man that they arrested. It was him. He was covered in dirt because he had just buried the bodies, and I had made small talk and wished him a good day. I've struggled with mental issues for most of my life, and I've ended up in the mental hospitals because of this a couple of times now. While there, I made a couple of good friends, 
and we would tell each other stories and random things about us. One of my friends had briefly been in jail with Cosmo. Apparently, even though he seemed completely normal when I met him, he's completely lost his mind now, lashing out and talking to himself. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.